I'm going to tell you a story you've never heard before because no one knows this story the way I know it. It takes place the night of June 12, 1994, and it concerns the murders of my ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her young friend, Ronald Goldman. Forget everything you think you know about that night because I know the facts better than anyone. The story you know or think you know, that's not the story, not even close. On June 12, 1994, a horrifying tragedy struck in Los Angeles. Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman were brutally murdered outside her home. The case gained massive attention due to Nicole's previous marriage to O.J. Simpson, a former football star. O.J. Simpson faced a highly publicized trial for the murders. Despite substantial evidence against him, including DNA, he was acquitted in October 1995. Then he confessed to the 1994 murders 12 years later. Later in 2007. I'm going to tell you a story you've never heard before because no one knows this story the way I know it. But the story didn't end there. In 2012, a convicted serial killer named Glenn Rogers claimed he committed the murders. They got money, they're well off, and I'm taking her down. This revelation raised questions about Simpson's innocence and sparked renewed interest in the case. Could O.J. Simpson have been innocent? Was there a connection between the murders of Brown and Goldman? Or was it all just a tangled web of lies? Stay tuned, because we're about to dive deep into the mystery of the murders and the entire O.J. Simpson trial, revealing details you won't find anywhere else on the internet. Orenthal James Simpson, or simply known as O.J. Simpson, was an American football player and actor. His professional success was overshadowed by his trial and controversial acquittal for the murders of his former wife, Nicole Brown, and her friend, Ron Goldman, in 1994. Simpson met Nicole Brown at the age of 18 in 1977 while she was working as a waitress at a Beverly Hills nightclub called The Daisy. Although still married to his first wife, Marguerite Whitley, Simpson began dating Brown. Simpson and Marguerite divorced in March 1970 during the 1984 Summer Olympics torch relay, Simpson carried the torch on Santa Monica's California Incline Road, running behind Brown. Brown and Simpson were married on February 2nd, 1985, five years after his retirement from professional football. According to the laws of the state of California, it gives me great delight, O.J. and Nicole, to pronounce you husband and wife, whom therefore God hath joined together, let no one put a son the couple had two children, Sidney Brooks Simpson and Justin Ryan Simpson. The marriage lasted seven years. Simpson emotionally, verbally, and physically abused Brown throughout their relationship and continued after their divorce. During an incident on New Year's Day 1989, a police report indicated Simpson said, I don't want that woman sleeping in my bed anymore. I got two women, and I don't want that woman in my bed anymore. Brown claimed that by the end of 1989, police had visited her and Simpson Simpson's house eight times for domestic violence calls, and they did not help her in any of them. On December 31st, she phoned the police, saying that she thought he was going to kill her. She was found by officers hiding in the bushes outside their home, badly beaten and half naked. Authorities said Simpson had punched, slapped, and kicked her. A family friend claimed that Simpson had told Brown's friends that if he ever caught her with anyone, he would kill her. Starting in the mid-1970s, Simpson was friends with brothers Lyle and Eric Menendez, who later became famous for the 1989 arrests, trial, and convictions for the murders of their parents. He visited their house several times. The three met up again in prison after Simpson was arrested for double murder in the 1990s. At the time of their separation, Simpson informed Brown of his ongoing one-year extramarital affair
Air with Tawny Kitayan. In January 1992, Brown moved into a rental home in Brentwood, a neighborhood in Los Angeles, California, a four-bedroom Tudor-style house with 3,400 square feet on Gretna Green Way, where she lived for two years. Simpson filed for divorce on February 25th, 1992, citing irreconcilable differences. They then shared custody of their children. Following the divorce, reports suggest that in 1993, after the divorce, Brown and Simpson made an attempt at reconciliation. During this time, Simpson continued his abuse of Brown. Brown told her mother after the divorce that Simpson was following her, stating, I go to the gas station, he's there. I go to the Payless shoe store, and he's there. I'm driving, and he's behind me. On October 25, 1993, Brown called the police to report Simpson being violent again after he allegedly found a photo of a man Brown had dated while they were broken up. Audio released during the murder trial of O.J. Simpson revealed that Brown called 911, crying and saying that Simpson was going to beat the shit out of me. Simpson angrily shouted in the background, you did not give a shit about the kids when you were having sex with him in the living room. They were here, didn't care about the kids then. When the police arrived, Brown was secretly recorded by Sergeant Craig Lally. He gets a very animalistic look in him, Brown stated. All his veins pop out. His eyes are black and just black. I mean cold, like an animal. I mean very, very weird. And when I see it, it just scares me. Brown also stated Simpson had not hit her in four years. Brown met and became friends with Cato Kalin on a skiing trip in Aspen, Colorado in December 1992. He later moved into the guest house on Brown's property on Gretna Green Way and lived there for a year. He paid rent and helped take care of Sidney and Justin as part of the living arrangement. In January 1994, Brown moved just a few minutes away from her Gretna greenhouse to a three-story rental town home on Bundy Drive in Brentwood. Her life was going smoothly, and then Ron Goldman entered. According to a June 15, 1994 Los Angeles Times article, Nicole met 25-year-old restaurant waiter Ron Goldman six weeks prior to their murder. According to police and friends, they had a platonic relationship, occasionally meeting for coffee and dinner in the weeks before their deaths. Goldman borrowed her Ferrari when he met a friend for lunch. The friend, Craig Clark, stated that Goldman told him it was his friend Nicole's car. On June 12, 1994, Nicole Brown Simpson had a seemingly ordinary start to her day. She got up early, cooked breakfast for her children, and took them on a shopping trip. Later on, she attended her daughter Sydney's dance recital with some of her family members. Once that was over, the family went to an Italian restaurant called Mezzaluna, where Goldman worked. While there, Brown Simpson's mom forgot her glasses. Goldman volunteered to drop them off at Brown Simpson's house. Just after midnight, her dog, White Akita, led to the discovery of the bloodied bodies of Brown, Simpson, and Goldman outside her home. Simpson was found dead, sprawled on the sidewalk outside, stabbed multiple times, along with her friend Ron Goldman. The murder was brutal. She had been stabbed 12 times. Goldman had been stabbed 25 times. The story exploded quickly as Brown Simpson was identified as the ex-wife of legendary professional football player O.J. Simpson. The police believed that Brown was the intended target and that Goldman was killed in order to silence him. Witness Robert Heidstra testified that while walking near Brown's condominium that night, he heard a man yelling, Hey! 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 who was shouted at by a second man. Goldman's family came to believe that Ron was the man shouting, Hey! 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 and that he may have attempted to save Brown and intervened in the attack. Goldman was 20 days shy of his 26th birthday. On June 13th, police had gone to O.J.'s house while he was returning from Chicago and found a trail of blood from his vehicle to the front door and a bloody glove matching one found by Goldman's body. Phillips testified that when he called Simpson in Chicago, to tell him of Brown's murder. Simpson sounded very upset, but was oddly unconcerned about the circumstances of her death. Simpson only asked if the children had seen the murder or Brown's body, but was not concerned about whether the assailant had harmed the children either. The police contacted Simpson at his home on June 13th and took him to Parker Center for questioning. Lang noticed that Simpson had a cut on a finger on his left hand that was consistent with where the killer was bleeding from and asked Simpson how he got the cut. At first, Simpson claimed claimed he cut his finger accidentally while in Chicago after learning of Brown's death. Lang then informed Simpson that blood was found inside his car. At this point, Simpson admitted that he had cut his finger on June 12th, but said he did not remember how. A criminal trial in Los Angeles County Superior Court, in which former NFL player and actor O.J. Simpson, was tried for the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. The murder trial spanned eight months, from January 24 to October 3, 1995. Opening statement
statements were made on January 24, 1995, though prosecutors argued that Simpson was implicated by a significant amount of forensic evidence. Simpson was formally charged with the murders on June 17 after DNA test results were finalized. When he did not turn himself in at the agreed time, he became the subject of a low-speed police pursuit while riding in a Ford Bronco SUV owned and driven by his friend Al Cowlings. TV stations interrupted coverage of the 1994 NBA Finals to broadcast live coverage of the pursuit, which was watched by around 95 million people. The pursuit and Simpson's arrest were among the most widely publicized events in American history. The trial is often characterized as the trial of the century because of its international publicity and has been described as the most publicized criminal trial in history. With no witnesses to the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, DNA evidence in the O.J. Simpson murder case was the key physical proof used by the prosecution to link O.J. Simpson to the crime. Over nine weeks of testimony, 108 exhibits of DNA evidence, including 61 drops of blood, were presented at trial. Testing was cross-referenced and validated at three separate labs using different tests with no discrepancies found. The prosecution offered the defense access to the evidence samples to conduct their own testing, but they declined. After nine months of trial, he was acquitted of both murders on October 3rd. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. In 1997, Fred Goldman, the father of Ron Goldman, filed a civil lawsuit against O.J. Simpson after Simpson had been acquitted in the criminal trial for the murders of Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson. Fred Goldman's civil lawsuit accused Simpson of wrongful death, seeking compensation for the loss of his son and punitive damages to hold Simpson accountable for his actions. Trial lasted from October 1996 to February 1997, and in this civil case, the jury ultimately found Simpson liable for the wrongful death of Ron Goldman and the battery of Nicole Brown Simpson. The jury awarded a combined total of $33.5 million in compensatory and punitive damages to the families of Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson. Although Simpson was ordered to pay these damages, his efforts to avoid payment, combined with his financial status and other legal challenges, made it difficult for the Goldman family to collect the full amount amount awarded by the court. On the night of September 13, 2007, a group of men led by Simpson entered a room in the Palace Station Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. Bruce Fromong, a sports memorabilia dealer, testified that the group broke into his hotel room and stole memorabilia at gunpoint. Three days later, on September 16, 2007, Simpson was arrested and initially held without bail. He admitted taking the items, which he said had been stolen from him, but denied breaking into the room. Simpson also denied the allegation that he or the people with him carried weapons weapons. Bail was later set at $125,000. On October 3, 2008, exactly 13 years after he was acquitted of the murders of his ex-wife and Ronald Goldman Simpson was found guilty of all 12 charges. The charges against him included armed robbery, kidnapping, conspiracy, burglary, and assault with a deadly weapon. Right after the verdict was read, Simpson, who had been free on bail prior to this point, was handcuffed and remanded to the Clark County Detention Center without bail, pending sentencing. On December 5, 2008, Simpson was sentenced to 33 years in prison with eligibility for parole in nine years in October 2017. On October 1, 2017, Simpson was released from prison, having completed the minimum required sentence. Glenn Edward admits that O.J. hired him to kill Brown and Goldman. According to a 2012 cable TV documentary, Rogers claimed that he committed the 1994 murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. Glenn Edward Rogers is an American convicted serial killer. He was also convicted of related crimes in Florida and California, such as armed robbery, grand theft auto, and arson. Also known as the cross-country killer, he was convicted of first-degree murder at two separate trials in the deaths of two women, the first in Florida in 1997 and the second in California in June 1999. He is a suspect in numerous other murders throughout the United States. After a crime spree that began on September 28, 1995, with Rogers' first authoritatively established murder, he was featured on the FBI 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. A 2012 documentary entitled My Brother the Serial Killer examined Rogers' crimes and included claims that Rogers had killed Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman in California in 1994. According to Rogers' brother Clay, Rogers claimed 
claimed that before the murders, he had met Brown and was going to take her down. During a prison meeting between the two, Rogers claimed O.J. Simpson hired him to break into Nicole Brown Simpson's house and steal some expensive jewelry. He said that Simpson had told him, you may have to kill the bitch. In a filmed interview, Glenn's brother Clay asserts that his brother confessed his involvement. Rogers later spoke to a criminal profiler about the Goldman Simpson murders, providing details about the crime and remarking that he had been hired by O.J. Simpson to steal a pair of earrings and potentially murder Nicole. LAPD responded to the documentary as follows. We know who killed Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. We have no reason to believe that Mr. Rogers was involved. Fred Goldman, father of Ron Goldman, stated, the overwhelming evidence at the criminal trial proved that one and only one person murdered Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. That person is O.J. Simpson and not Glenn Rogers. In 2006, almost a decade after the civil trial, Simpson announced he would release a book about the murders originally titled O.J. Simpson, If I Did It, Here's How It Happened. But the book was quickly scrapped following public outcry after a bankruptcy court in Florida awarded the rights of the book to the Goldman family. The book was finally published in 2007, but with a new name, If I Did It, Confessions of the Killer. Goldman and Brown's family also received all the profits from the book. In the first chapter, Simpson wrote how he began dating Brown, the 1984 fight, and then married in 1885. However, he painted Brown as physically violent and said she had a real temper on her. Simpson claimed that she was always the instigator of the fights that led to the deterioration of the couple's marriage. Simpson also claimed that Brown was obsessed with getting back together after their divorce in 1992. On June 12, 1994, O.J. Simpson, his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson, and her family attended a dance recital together. After the recital, Simpson didn't join them for dinner because he was trying to avoid Nicole. He went to get burgers with Cato Kalin, who was staying in his guest house. Later, Simpson was packing for a flight to Chicago when a fictional friend named Charlie visited and told him Nicole had been partying and doing drugs in Cabo. Angry, Simpson decided to confront her. He grabbed a wool hat, a pair of gloves, and a knife, but Charlie took the knife from him. Simpson and Charlie went to Nicole's house, entering through a broken gate. When they got there, a waiter named Ron Goldman arrived to return glasses Nicole's mom had left at the restaurant. Simpson began to yell, and Nicole came outside to confront him. She slipped and fell, hitting her head. When Goldman tried to defend her, Simpson blacked out. When he regained consciousness, Simpson was covered in blood and had no memory of what happened. He left his bloody clothes with Charlie, returned home, and flew to Chicago. The next day, he got the call that Nicole had been murdered. His longtime lawyer, Malcolm Laverne, told multiple media outlets today that Simpson died after a battle with prostate cancer. The former football star and murder defendant died April 10, 2024, at the age of 76. His family announced his death on social media the next day. That's it for today's video. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more relevant content.